Hey everybody, it's Mark. I have a good one for you today. Makara just sent me their latest desktop CNC machine, the Makara Z1. This is the easiest CNC to get into for beginners. It comes with everything you need to get up and running. So what we're gonna do is unbox this guy and start designing some really cool guitar related projects. There's no assembly required. You just lift it out of the box and you're up and running. So let's get to it. Come on. I have two boxes here. I have the Makara Z1 itself. And then I also have the Cyclone Dust Collector, which is the companion device for the Z1. It's gonna allow us to really kind of suck up all that dust when we're machining our materials. Let's go ahead and unbox these. Okay, here are all the components that came with the Makara Z1. Just wanted to show you in general what it looks like when you open this out of the box. Let's go ahead and open up the dust extractor too. Wow. Way prettier than a shop vac, right? We'll get into all this later, but it is a really well-designed, beautiful dust collector. Makara makes just some gorgeous products. It feels like you're in the future. I mean, this is the future of desktop CNC machining. Look at this. Absolutely sci-fi. Setting up the Makara Z1 is pretty easy. So all we did was put the bracket onto the spoil board. Now it's just basically a handful of plugs. We have the emergency stop. We have the controller for the dust collector and we have the power. And at the bottom, we have the port for the dust collector. That's it. That's basically four things, four things to connect and you're up and running. So the first project we're going to build is a Gibson medallion. These are medallions you'd find on the back of Les Pauls from the Custom Shop or Murphy Lab. You only find these on very expensive high-end guitars. This one's $9,000. So another example would be this one for $7,000. And you can see the badge here is also a little different, says made in the USA, but it's still really gorgeous. Once you start getting into the normal range Les Pauls, you see plastic. It's just every single Les Paul in the world has plastic. And these are your typical Les Pauls that are around $2,500 to $3,000. So for three grand, all you get is plastic. And what we're going to do is we're going to build one of these gorgeous, gorgeous metal medallions. All right, so this is what I designed in CAD. This one looks really cool. And it's very similar to what you see on some of the very high-end $9,000 Les Paul guitars. But I kind of want to make this my own because I don't want it to be a total copy of the Gibson Custom Shop badge. I want to do something unique. So I came up with this. It has the recess. It has the extended platform. It has the extended logo, but I put a star on here. So it doesn't say Custom Shop and it doesn't say Built in Nashville, but it still looks really cool. So this is what we're going to build. Let's get to it. So clearly this came out perfect. It looks beautiful, it's nice and crisp. So this is the epoxy board that I prototyped on and you can see the level of detail is pretty crazy. It's just crisp and beautiful. This stuff is great for prototyping. Let's go ahead and start with the aluminum. came out awesome. Also super crisp. I wanted to show the finishing pass on the contour. You can see how lovely it is. It's a mirror finish. This surface finish on the floors, 
you don't feel that. It's 100% smooth. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot this with paint and it's gonna paint everything and cover up all that surface finishing. And then what we'll do is we'll turn this upside down and we'll sand it. And what that's gonna do is remove the paint from the logo and the star and the outer rim. All right, so I masked off the edge and then I painted it. What's gonna happen next is I'm gonna turn it upside down and I'm gonna sand it like this. Beautiful. So sharp and crisp. Everything came up exactly the way I wanted. This is exactly the way I envisioned it. And I was so lucky that I was able to test print with the epoxy board. The level of detail, look at the points on the star. Look how perfect they are. They're so pointy. The logo too, look at that I above the, look at that dot above the I. Look at the G. Beautiful work with the Z1. So for this next project, we're gonna make humbucker pickup rings. The sad thing about humbucker pickup rings is they're all made of plastic. They don't even give you all the plastic. They're injection molded. They're not that great, right? I wanna use aluminum. And for this project, I'll probably just do one. So we're just gonna do the neck just to kind of show the process and how easy the make hair can do this and how quickly you can do it. pretty cool. You can see the taper here. I got the nice little chamfers and screw holes and I just used sandpaper to put a satin finish on here. So I could stop here if I wanted to, but what I want to do is polish this up to see how shiny we can get it. I'll just mock this up for you real quick. This is a brand new Spankin Alnico 2 pickup right out of the box and still has all the plastic covering on it, but it's brand new. And this is what it would look like. Look at that. That looks a thousand times better than cheap plastic. Also, I totally dropped this when I had it on the buffer. So I was on the buffer and it's spinning and it just flew out of my hand and I got a divot right there. I'm so sad, but it's okay because I can machine as many of these as I want. And you really just can't beat this look of a machined aluminum pickup ring with the chromed cover. The whole point is I wanted to demonstrate that you could easily, easily make all these plastic bits on the Z1 in no time at all. All right, so let's take a look at the Makera Cyclone Dust Collector and see how much stuff it actually got. Look at that. So the first thing is it's really awesome that the Z1 is completely enclosed. So none of this stuff is actually getting anywhere in my shop being collected by the Cyclone Dust Collector. So the Makera Cyclone Dust Collector does have a knob here and it'll go from essentially what's off auto all the way to max. And when you go down to the first click, that's an auto mode and that means it's controlled by the software and it'll kick in automatically when it needs to. So now let's go ahead and move on. Let's move on to the next project where I wanna cut out carbon fiber. So what we're gonna be doing is building a control cavity cover for the SG. Plastic seems to be the go-to material for these large guitar company manufacturers. So as boutique builders, we usually use wood for the control cavity covers because it's a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. We know the Z1 can cut wood easily. That's a no-brainer. What I wanna do is see if it can cut carbon fiber. So this next project is gonna be making a control cavity cover Instead of plastic, instead of wood, we're gonna be using carbon fiber. Let's get to it. So this next project is really important because it's something that we do as guitar builders all the time in the shop. We're always building control cavity covers. This is a repair. This is a Gibson SG, and this needs a cavity cover because this guy is broken and cracked. So we cracked here, and there's another crack forming here, and I can actually open the crack. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually replace this with carbon fiber. 
So if I'm gonna make a control cavity cover for a control cavity that I didn't design in CAD, I have no clue what the shape is. So I have to trace the shape. And the way I do that is with the shaper trace. So the way this works is it comes with this little frame and then you put your item in here and then you use your phone and then judging by the dots, it knows the angle and basically it traces this out and creates an SVG for you. And this gives me an approximate file that I can throw into CAD, modify, edit, and then actually create a toolpath for it. So I already did this part, but the next step is actually pretty crucial. What I then do is iterate through the designs. So I use artist watercolor paper and I cut them out of my laser. And I'm able to actually fit this into the control cavity of the guitar and determine what needs to be modified. So it fits in there nicely. So this began as a trace of the cavity cover, but I modified it and I pushed all the lines and curves necessary in order to get a nice tight fit. I think for this project, what we're gonna do is just start cutting, start machining the carbon fiber on the Z1. Once it came off the Z1, I send it off the tabs and I immediately put it in here to get a test fit. And it is such a perfect fit. The Z1 did a perfect job of machining it and it looks so beautiful. And it's totally flush and it doesn't move. Like it doesn't jiggle. It's in there perfectly. Way better than the factory plastic control cavity cover. You can see how tight the fit is and the holes line up perfectly just because we did this in CAD. It's much thicker than the original plastic one, and this is the way to go. The feeds and speeds worked out pretty good on the Z1, so there was no melting, no delamination. It actually worked out really well. Now, one of the things I didn't take into account was the direction of the actual grain of the twill. So you can see it's going diagonal. I didn't even think about that until, until I put it on and noticed it right now. Like, you can actually make the twill go in any direction you want. Um, this was just a happy accident that's going at this sort of like 45 degree angle, which I think looks fabulous. And I don't have the screws yet, but I'm thinking maybe like gold screws is gonna make this look so cool. So I wanna talk a little bit about the specs before I move on. I know specs are a little bit dry and boring, but I wanna get them out of the way because they are truly a unique feature set of specs on the Z1. We'll start with the general specifications. This has a working area of 200 millimeters by 200 millimeters and 100 millimeters on the Z-axis. This is a one piece cast aluminum frame, right? And this is fully enclosed. This is a 150 watt brushless motor with closed loop control. The speeds can go up from zero to 13,000 RPM. And my favorite part, it has the quick manual tool changer. So it has NEMA 17 stepper motors with linear rails and Acme lead screws on all the axes. There is an integrated aero dust system in the spindle that blows out chips from the end mill path. So this has a built-in camera for real-time monitoring and time-lapse recordings. And obviously the whole thing is Wi-Fi, which eliminates the need for any type of wired cables. Now, so there's some optional accessories as well. And the optional accessories are the five watt laser module and the fourth axis rotary module. For guitar builders who want to get into CNC, we don't want to spend a whole bunch of money. We only need the 200 by 200 millimeter working area for making small parts like I've demonstrated. It's a perfect machine. came out pretty good. This is the second test and the depth of cut is much deeper. Well, relatively speaking, much deeper. This is 0.3 millimeters, 0.3 of a depth. So it starts off at 0.1 millimeters at the crest and then it goes down to 0.3 at the valley. And you get these kind of humps that go all the way around this Rose engine style dial. So let's go ahead and engrave a dial. Which dial color should we use? We have this sort of silver one, gold, and then black enamel. 
was kind of cool. So we'll, we'll start on this guy here. Let's put him in the jig. And here's the jig. All right, this is in the jig. You can see it's not moving around. I can move my finger and it's not moving in the jig. It's doing a really great job of doing what it needs to do. Typically, if we were to do a rose engine dial, we do this on a piece of stock. Then we actually cut out the circle, all right, the dial. Because this is already cut out, I can really never get a perfect center point on this. Like, I can guess where the center is. And I can tell the Z1 that the center is the origin. But it's not going to be perfectly. I'm going to be off by, like, you know, point, you know, one or two millimeters. So I, I need you guys to understand that what I'm doing now is probably the wrong way to do this. The right way would be to use brass stock, make the pattern, then cut out the dial so it's all in one CAD file and everything's perfect. I'm just testing it on a dial and seeing if this whole jig method works. There are some depth issues on the left-hand side. And what this is telling me is that the jig is not set up right. So when I push down on it, I can feel some sponginess when I push down on it, which means the recess on my jig is probably not that great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the jig around and see if that'll help. Yeah, this came out pretty good. Look at that. Beautiful. And just the way it catches the light. All that three-dimensional look. All right, so I flipped the jig around, so this is the flat side without the recess, but the feet holes are still there. So I just basically used a dab of super glue on both sides and I put the dial on. So this should be dead flat. Nice, this thing came out so pretty. Look at this. So this was a brass dial that was coated with black enamel. It came out just gorgeous. The contrast is what really makes this. Contrast and, of course, the wavy depth. Now, obviously, I'm just showing what is possible with the Z1. I didn't actually design a full watch dial with numerals and indices. Now, it's full of uh, dust and material. We need to clean it somehow. I don't have any canned air or compressed air. But I think that's what I need to get rid of all this stuff. Isn't that beautiful? Oh. Trying to eyeball the origin point, which is the center, was going to be really, really tough. So you can see this totally off just a little bit, but that is what I expected just because I'm using these pre-made dials and I don't know where the center is on these pre-made dials. I was just guessing at that point. CNC machining should be fun. It shouldn't be a chore. Much like 3D printing is easy and fun, the Z1 makes CNC machining easy and fun. It comes with everything you need and there's virtually no setup. I was able to make a ton of projects in a very short amount of time with very little effort. And that just goes to show you what's possible with a Z1. So totally great addition to any shop, especially if you're a guitar maker and especially if you want to get into making metal hardware. Thanks for watching. Take it easy.